running shell commands from our backends which can be in any language in this video we're going to see how to run shell commands in node.js and i mean this is really crazy we can do a lot of stuff we can almost run any shell command we can turn our node.js application into an api we can list our docker containers create containers we can create services we can actually do almost everything using these that are built inside programming languages so i'm so excited stick with me to find out more What's up guys medium guy here in this video we're going to see how to actually run a shell command using a programming language which in this one will be node.js so without any delay let's get into work so in node.js with the child process modules we can actually run shell commands in two different methods one being exec and one being spawn which both has their own advantages and disadvantages so as you can see node.js executes its main event loop in a single thread however that does not mean that all its process is done in that one single process like asynchronous tasks in node.js are executed in other internal threads and when they are complete the code in the callback or error is returned to the main single thread so the exec function creates a new shell and executes a given command the output from the execution is buffered which means it is kept in the memory so it is not memory friendly and it is available for us to use in the callback function so as you can see over here i've just imported the exec function from the child process modules that is built in and does not require any installation so using the exec function i've just tried to run the ls-la command in the shell and as the callback function which has three different parameters one being error second being std out third the std error so there are some differences between the error and std error which is that the error will not be empty even if there is no errors and inside the callback function i've got two total ifs which one checks for the error if there are any errors it's going to just simply console log the message and second the std error which will be the actual error while running the shell command and if there are no errors and there are no std errors i'm just going to simply console log the std out which is going to be available for me as a text so actually by running this js file i'm expecting to get the files and directory lists of the current directory that the exec.js file exists so if i simply say node exec.js and as the result i get the output which i'll be able to actually get the same output if i go ahead and run ls-la in the terminal so for me that is really crazy you can do a lot of cool stuff with this like for example do some things that we want to do in the shell itself from the node.js and expose some api and by actually calling those apis the actual command will be run in the shell and the result will be returned by the api so this is a crazy idea i have and i'll be actually trying to create it and maybe i turn it into a video and post so you guys can see the crazy idea behind this so the next method will be spawn the spawn function executes a command in a new process this function uses a stream api so its output of the command is made available via listeners so what this means actually is that 
the output will not be stored in the memory and it'll be just usable through the stream listeners that we create in our JS code. So again, I'm going to first import the spawn function this time from the same child process module and actually I'll create a variable and using the spawn function I'll pass the ls and the options that I want to pass to it as an array. So as we can see the ls variable will now have the stdout.on if any data is received from the std out it'll just go ahead and console log the string that is coming from the std out again the same thing for the std error and again the same thing for the error itself and lastly we have the ls.onclose which will return us a code and we can actually be able to access the exit code for the command that we run and we can also decide by its value if it is non-zero so our command has been not able to execute correctly. So I'm going to run the spawn.js which will exactly do the same shell command so if I say node spawn.js again I'll be able to access the same result so the key differences between the exec and the spawn will be how they return the data so as I said the exec function will store its output in a buffer so it is not too much memory friendly and basically will use the spawn function whenever it comes to choosing between the memory friendly or not and if we are not expecting large amount of data we can simply use the exec function for simplicity for the same reason that I just talked to you guys about. So for me, this is really crazy. I'll actually try to create stuff and I'll be use it in my daily works. So that's all for this video. If you have any ideas, any recommendations, and also if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below. Don't forget to watch my other videos on my channel. I've got cool stuff using cool technologies. And of course, I'll put the repository link down below where you can find all the files and configurations and any other stuff that I create in my videos. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe, which will help grow the channel. And with that, I hope to see you in the next videos.